I'm glad Jesus is our living hope, lived and died for us. Let's sing this morning. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountains I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name. stand with us together. We're going to take our greeting time, and what we're going to do is just wave to another, one another, and would you say to someone who's nearby, close enough, Jesus is my hope. Tell somebody today, Jesus is my hope. All right, let's sing to him now this morning again.
Let's have, a, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God in heaven, we again ask you to look down and Lord and find our presence pleasing in your sight, find our singing uh, joyful in your ears, Lord. And Lord, we pray your protection, we pray your blessings, uh, Lord, we pray your mercy and grace. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, we ask you to be with our services this morning in your name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Well, uh, thanks for being here today. If you were watching the choir special, uh, my wife was up in the top right corner. I think I need to take her dancing or something. I don't know. Uh, she seemed pretty excited singing, and that's okay. Uh, I like people excited singing for the Lord. And uh, well, anyway, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, we, we, uh, if you're a guest or uh, uh, haven't been here in a while, we sure... <laughs> There's my wife at the back looking at me. Uh, 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 anyway, if you're a guest, uh, we have great communication cards and chair pocket in front of you, and you can fill those out. Uh, if you have a prayer need, you just let us know. Uh, we really, uh, we really want to uh, pray about whatever you on your heart, whatever burden you're carrying, and and if you need help with anything, you let us know. We'll sure try our very best to help. We help people every single week with a whole variety of things, and and uh, you just need to let us know how we can help you. Uh, we've got a few uh, uh, things I want to bring up this morning. First of all, I'll go ahead and put the, the picture up of the students. Do we have that? There we go. There's uh, uh, Seth and Natalie and Christian and Cynthia. And all four of those uh, young folks are from our church. And they're down at Baptist Bible College in Springfield, Missouri. And uh, we're real proud of them. And, and in fact, I sent them money so they could have pizza. And uh, so that's what they're getting together there for, having some pizza. And it was so I could get a group picture, too. Uh, and so this month, uh, if you'd like to uh, donate something extra towards uh, Baptist Bible College, Mark Melioni, the president, is going to be here the last Sunday of the month. And not that we invited him up. He was, uh, he's visiting a Bible college down the highway and was going to be here anyway. And so it just worked out. And uh, as you can imagine, Bible colleges are sure, like all colleges and universities, a lot of additional expenses, enrollments down because of the pandemic. And I just thought we'd try to be a blessing to them. If you'd like to give something extra, just mark your offering a Bible college, and we're going to uh, give Mark a check uh, when he's here on the 27th. And uh, he, he's not aware that we're doing this, so it would be a surprise to him. Well, anyway, uh, thanks for being here. Another announcement is uh, go to the next one. The next, so next Sunday night... Uh, is our third uh, drive-in church service. So it's at 6 p.m., just like our normal evening service. Uh, we'll, there's singing, there's preaching. Uh, I think we did, a, uh, the deacons did a great job last time uh, polling everybody and parking them drive-in style, you know. Everybody seemed like they had a way better view of things. And uh, you listen to the service over your radio, so if it's cold, you can have your heater on. Uh, if it's warm, you can have your AC on. And then uh, we pass out the prepackaged communion uh, packs, which are working well for this. And afterwards, uh, we have actually uh, some individual little cakes and ice cream bars that we'll be passing out uh, under the drive through And so, uh, you know, invite some people, bring the whole family. Uh, it's been very successful. Uh, we praise the Lord for that. And so uh, n next week uh, is the next drive-in church service. And so, again, thanks for being here. Uh, thanks for keeping... Uh, your church in, our, in your prayers. 
Uh, and for those uh, watching online, we sure appreciate you. We did a little count, and there's about 200 and some people watching online every week. And so we want you to know, since uh, you're hearing this, uh, that we love you, and we, if we can do anything for you, you just need to let us know what we can do for you. We appreciate you too. God bless. Let's have a great morning. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. Let's sing together. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the Well, good morning again. Turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 16. The Gospel of John, chapter 16. And uh, today we start a new series called Be of Good Cheer. And I want you to know, uh, I'm just going to tell you right up front, it is a challenge some days uh, to be of good cheer. And it certainly is a challenge this year. And so 
uh, when, I, uh, when I felt the Lord laying this series on my heart, I want you to know, I'm like, boy, Lord, uh, how, how am I supposed to preach that w- with all that's going on? And uh, I realized uh, that Jesus said it, and so that's what we're going to look at today. Jesus said, uh, be of good cheer. So let's go ahead and stand for just a moment. John chapter 16, starting with verse 29, and uh, we'll read through 33. And I'll read out loud, and you can listen along or follow along, whatever your preference is. So verse 29, His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou, are we, are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee by this? We believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Let's go to the Lord in a short word of prayer. Lord God, we are thankful that you spoke these words. And for the next, uh, Lord, four weeks, we're looking at four different occasions that you said, be of good cheer. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that in in this day that we're in right now, that, Lord, you would show us what you mean by that. Lord, it certainly seems uh, out of touch almost. But Lord, if you said it, you've asked, do you believe? So Lord, we're going to tell you we do believe you. And Lord, allow us to see some things from not only the Gospel of John today, but also from this passage. And Lord, help us to leave here, Lord, still fully aware of things that are going on, but with some cheer in our heart because we can have it in your name we pray amen you may be seated well it was a you know the the summer series of payday someday was certainly a series uh, containing lots of God's judgment on things and on people and certainly a lot of tough scenarios and and so I certainly try to balance things out and so it was no wonder the Lord uh, laid on my heart about a, a four-week sermon series on being of good cheer, and, and but again, I just I'm just being very transparent with you. Uh, I'm like, Lord, how how am I supposed to do that? Well, I, I, well, let's dive into the the scriptures for just a few minutes, and I think we're going to see. So the Gospel of John uh, starts off uh, uh, talking about some of the life of Christ, and when we get to chapters 13 through 17. Uh, That's known as the upper room discourse or uh, the upper room conversation. Uh, John records more of what happened in the upper room than than any of the other three, even uh, the other three put together. Uh, So he records this lengthy conversation of those five chapters of while they were uh, in the upper room. And of course, this is the evening before... Uh, Christ is arrested and then the next day uh, crucified. When they arrive in chapter 13, of course, I I just pick some things out of each chapter leading up to 16. When they arrive in chapter 13, Jesus washes their feet. Now, to some degree, this is just getting cleaned up for supper. I mean, I know it's a practical side too, but I just thought, boy, Jesus, he, he just wants to be uh, the servant. He, he's showing himself as, as the humble servant, having a servant's heart. Uh, now, there are times Jesus was very forceful and, uh, and I, mean, I mean, he was very pointed and, and uh, I mean, just made his, his uh, mind clear on some things. But at the same time, uh, he, was a, he, was a, he, he, he was able to have a servant's heart in lots of scenarios. And you think about the the humble attitude of, 
of washing the disciples' feet. And I'm sure, you know, Peter was the one of them that said, Lord, what are you doing? I don't want you to wash my feet. And, and Jesus just says, if you want to part, be part of me, you're going to let me wash your feet. Of course, Peter's like, then wash all of me, you know. I mean, that was old. that's how Peter responded to everything. After the Passover supper, by the way, which John doesn't cover, okay, John doesn't cover it, uh, Jesus reveals af, uh, after the supper is over that Judas is going to betray him. And so Jesus dismisses Judas. And it's interesting to me that he allowed him to be there for supper, but dismissed him before communion, uh, which is why we Baptists invite everybody to the church supper, but only believers to the Lord's supper. I mean, here, here's, an, here's the, some of the reasons why we do that. That's part of our theology. In chapter 14, the Lord tells the disciples he's, a, he's about to leave. Now, I realize he's going to be gone for three days and then resurrected, and, but then 40 days later, he does leave for good and when he ascends to heaven. So he's talking about, guys, I, I am going to be leaving you soon. Um, he tells them he's going to his father's house uh, to comfort them on this finally plain uh, teaching. He says, now let me tell you a little bit about heaven so chapter 14, uh, the Lord talks about, uh, you know, mansions in heaven. Uh, he also says he's going to send the Holy Spirit to dwell with them and to, to comfort them. Um, and, and he says, if you're truly saved, you're going to get the Holy Spirit living in your life. And, that, and he says, my spirit is going to remind you all the time uh, that, I, that I'm for you and that I'm, I want to comfort you. In chapter 15, uh, the passage begins with the famous uh, passage about the vine and the branches and how Jesus says, listen, uh, uh, if, if you're really saved, you're going to need to be connected with me. I, he says, I am the vine, and yes, you're not going to be just like me, but you need to be connected to me. And, and so, you know, how do we do that practically? We, we stay in the scriptures, you know, we have daily devotions, we read the Bible, we come to church, uh, you know, we pray, we talk to the Lord. I mean, all of that goes into staying connected to the Lord. And, and, uh, but then he, in that very passage in chapter 15, he says, now, by the way, the world's not going to like the vine, so Jesus, so don't be surprised when it doesn't like you because you're a, a Christian or, or that you're a believer. And in that passage, then he goes on and says, now listen, and knowing that, you guys need to love one another. In chapter 16, of course, in the passage that we're in, uh, uh, although I'm going to give you some things from the first part of the, the chapter, uh, Jesus gives both uh, advice and comfort, and I'm going to tell you, I think it's very needed today. First of all, the Lord acknowledges some challenging times. Uh, you, you look in verse 8 of chapter 16, I just cherry-picked some verses from the chapter. Uh, verse number 8, Jesus says, uh, he says, when he, is gone, when he has come, so the Holy Spirit he's talking about, he will reprove the world of, and what's it say? Sin. Boy, I'll tell you what, uh, nothing's less fun than bringing up something that somebody did that was incorrect or wrong or, you know, in the spiritual realm, sin. Uh, and, and the Lord Jesus says, listen, the Holy Spirit's coming. And by the way, he says, when the Holy Spirit comes, then it's not just me that's going to reprove the world of sin. It's the Holy Spirit's going to work through the lives of believers and churches and ministries. And the world will be convicted of sin. And I can tell you, there's vast segments of society that hate that. And sometimes in an individual conversations, I mean, it just becomes very apparent to me. I'm like, why, why are you so angry? Uh, I said, the only thing I can think of is you're convicted of your sin. And of course, then they, they just get angrier, you know, and I don't do it for that reason. You, you think about uh, our world filled with sin today, murder and hatred and prejudice and pride and lying and rioting and scheming and greed and immorality and ethical behavior, arguing, backbiting, anger, unfaithfulness, and the list of sins in our generation goes on and on and on. And let us not pretend now that we're without sin. We're not. 
I mean, you know, we can always see sin in the unsaved world. I want you to know we also are sinners, though I surely hope you're like me and saved by grace. I, I think of Nehemiah when I wrote this uh, section who back in Babylon, uh, the, he got convicted. Now, you, I want you to hear this. Not of his sins, but of the sins of his people, the sins of his nation, the sins uh, of, of those that he knew. And he got on his knees and he said, Lord God, please forgive my people of their sins. Verse, verse 20, the Lord just admits the world uh, will first seemingly have its way. I want you to know the world... Uh, and. I don't mean to say that I think the world gets together and has a big powwow and decides how they're going to persecute Christians, but, but I think there are wicked men and women around the world, and, and in order to protect what they want to do or protect their way or protect their power, sometimes they then uh, do attack the, the, a Christian view or a Christian issue, and, uh, and it, then they end up persecuting people who, who really are followers of God. The disciples witnessed that firsthand, of course. I mean, after the Lord, I mean, they'd already seen it. And then after the Lord left, uh, you know, the book of Acts is, is filled with examples of the disciples witnessing firsthand persecution. James was uh, uh, slain with the sword by King Herod just for preaching. Christians were locked up by Saul before he got saved just for believing that Jesus rose from the dead. And it's happening today, too. The world seemingly gets its way. In May, uh, you probably heard about this, Franklin Graham and Samaritan's Purse went to New York City in the middle of the pandemic. And what did they do there? They went and set up a hospital tent city. And the, the, the proclamation was put out by Franklin Graham, we'll treat anybody... They weren't worried about what somebody had, whether it was COVID or anything else. They're just trying to be a help to all the city's hospitals and, and who were, you know, uh, pushed to the limit. And he said, bring them in. And, at the, and no sooner than they, did they get it up and running that some New York City uh, local politicians started attacking him for his uh, biblical view on marriage. And frankly, I was reading articles this week. They called him things so vile, I can't, I, of course, I could not repeat what they said. And I, I just thought, well, how sad. He's trying to do something good and being attacked. My friend uh, Jack Treber out in California, he pastors North Valley Baptist. Man, this guy, huh? I'm telling you what. Uh, I, I was reading about him. I've met him a couple times. Uh, uh, his church, man, it's just, it's a church right out of the biblical standards of being a church. I mean, they had prison ministries and homeless ministries and counseling ministries and benevolent ministries and feed the, feed the hungry ministries and, and what can we do for you ministries. I mean, it was just a, the, the list was almost just endless of all the things they do in their community to show the love of Christ and, and Jack treber has been there for 40 years leading his congregation into doing all these things. And currently, of course, that particular part of California, uh, they, they shut him down. And for some strange reason, some sinful things can be open, but, but not the church. And so that his particular township is fining them $5,000 a week for having services. And really, uh, old Pastor Treber is like, yeah, of course we want to have services, but we also want to take care of our community. Last month, maybe you did or didn't know this one, an Iowa State professor told her students they were not allowed to submit papers that were against abortion or same-sex marriage, and if they did, they would be dismissed. I want you to know, seemingly, the world sure tries to go against people who belong to God. And Jesus then said in verse 20 that sometimes, uh, again, the world is going to literally rejoice when, when these things happen. In verse 22, we're told that there will be sorrow. Jesus just flat out admits it. He, he says there, there's going to be sorrow in, in the world. There's going to be sorrow in your life. And, and he's talking to his disciples. So even believers, there, there is going to be sorrow that we have to face. 
I tell you, it's been a challenging year to be a lot of things, including a pastor. And I've had to, uh, I've had to FaceTime with people who are getting ready to go into surgery. Normally, uh, my wife or I are there to, to pray with them, spend time with them before surgery. And, and uh, I, I, I've been out to Story County Hospital because it's all on one floor. And I've stood outside the, ho- the hospital room window. I mean, it just feels weird. But I'm outside the window and I'm talking to the person in their room because, you know, I can't get in. And that's how, that, and now you say, why don't you do that, Mary Greeley? Well, because I don't have a ladder that tall is why. I mean, you know, it's several floors high. We've got families struggling to make ends meet. And, uh, you know, we've got some families, man, their hours have been reduced. And uh, they're, they're just struggling. I'm, I'm thankful our church has a a well-given-to benevolent fund that we can, we can help uh, when, when families go through these things. And, and I'm going to tell you, we've gone through more benevolent funds th- this year than any year in our church's history, just trying to, uh, you know, keep the, keep the wheels on the car, you know, and trying to keep people taken care of. And, and, and I just want to be a... Here's a little challenge to you. If you don't know somebody who is sorrowful or going through some things. Now, now, don't take offense to this, but I just want to tell you, if you don't know anybody like that, you're not paying attention. And you're not noticing people and their cares. Because I'm going to tell you, I know more than I can get to. In verse uh, 32, the Lord knows that sometimes we even feel alone. And you may say, well, I don't feel alone. Well, good for you. But I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of people that do. In verse 32, Jesus felt that way. He just admits it. That was part of the passage that we read. Uh, He says, listen, there's going to come a time. He says, all you guys are going to scatter on me. You're all going to scatter on me. And he he uses the word alone. And sure enough, at his arrest, what did they do? Well, they hid. They all ran. Yes, Peter was initially brave. And again, uh, you know, I can sure uh, appreciate that about old Peter. He initially uh, was standing with the Lord, but then later he denied him that he even knew him three times. And now I want you to know, I, you know, there's lots of seasons in life when we may feel alone. Some are, some are uh, sometimes are sad. Sometimes it is a little, you know, we look back and it's a little humorous. I realize this is probably not a very good comparison, but I, I went through a time in, when I was in Bible college that I felt like that. And of course, I got myself in trouble by myself. I... I remember uh, uh, I'd went to the, well, first of all, a friend of mine says, hey, I got some bottle rockets, you know, and that, for, anytime a conversation starts off that way, you know, well, I didn't know any better. Uh, so we decided to go up to the second floor of a dorm and shoot a bottle rocket into the building next, next to us across the sidewalk that choir practice was going on on the second floor over there. And uh, I think you need to go to the next graphic, Jack Workman. Um, and uh, so we did, and uh, just one, and of course uh, you could hear the girls uh, scream, you know, and uh, then you could hear the choir director get upset, rightly so, and uh, we all chuckled and went our way, and, and then the next day I get a summons to come see the dean. Now see, here's where it stopped being as funny, you understand, and, uh, and I asked the other guys that are with me, did you get one of these? And they're like, uh, no, and we were not part of that. I'm like, what do you mean you're not part of it? You were standing right there. You gave me the bottle rocket. You lit it. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember that, they'd say. You know, and I mean, they all split. And yes, I, uh, I got in trouble. And, and, you know, I'm just, I, I thought of that this week. I'm like, I remember saying, yeah, I, I shouldn't have done that. That was stupid. But man, it just feels weird when, weird when your friends bail on you. Jesus knows what it's like to feel alone, and there's lots of times in life that we go through serious things, and we feel alone. The Lord also wants us to know there will be trials. In verse 33, the Lord says there's going to be tribulation. That's a, that's a New Testament word for just going through stuff. Uh, you're going to go through stuff, Jesus says. I want you to know, uh, I see Ernie, uh, he, he worries about his dad in New Jersey, and Shane worries about his mom in Ohio, and right now, Deanna and I, we have a granddaughter in the hospital in Iowa City, and you know, we're, still not, we're still not 
you know, we're still not through the woods on everything going well yet. And, and uh, I want you to know, you, chances are a great percentage of our congrega- congregation has got concerns. And maybe it's job related. You know, is my business going to come out of this? So what's going to happen where I work? Are they going to cut the budget and cut hours? And I've already had two of those conversations with people this morning who have concerns about those things. There are going to be tribulations. There's going to be stuff we don't like. There's going to be some anxiousness in life. Jesus just said it's going to happen. But then in verse 33, not only does he finish up going through this list of things in this chapter that he says there's going to be some stuff like that, then he just says a statement. He says, be of good cheer. Now, I just want you to know, after I studied this chapter this week, and I'm like, wow, it it almost doesn't seem to fit. I mean, at first, you you know, you hear that, and you're like, well, that's a little little shallow. Uh, It's a little flippant. And, and, And I'll just tell you, sometimes when men and women say that in the different versions of cheer up, I, sometimes it is shallow and it, and it is flippant. When, when, uh, when somebody's heartbroken and somebody says, oh, don't worry, it'll be okay. I mean, if you're like me, you look at them and you're like, how do you even know what I'm going through? I remember when my dad passed away. I know the guy means well, but he comes up to me and he goes, oh, don't worry, you'll be okay. I mean, I'm, I'm just torn inside. And I'm like, what, what a, what a un- shallow you know, caringlessness thing to say to me right now. And I want you to know, when men and women, I mean, I know we, what we do, we're doing it for a good reason. We're trying to encourage somebody, but I think we ought to be very careful that it doesn't come across as flippant and shallow and just a casual thought. Uh, oh, your life's crashing. Oh, don't worry. You know, I understand people are trying to be nice, but sometimes, you know, you're going through things, and I'm like you, you know, you're going through stuff, and somebody just, ah, oh, don't worry, be okay, and you're like, you don't have a clue. But here's the big thing, and here's the big point, and you got to get this. This isn't just somebody saying it. It's Jesus. And when Jesus says it, I'm telling you, I want to show you three quick reasons why when Jesus says it, you can believe it. First of all, Jesus does know what we're going through. He's faced the trials. He was treated unfair. Uh, He was persecuted. He was left alone. He was hurt. He wept. He was heartbroken. He was misunderstood. He was betrayed. He knows what we're going through. And, and you're going to say, so, so he's, he's felt abandoned by somebody that he loved? Yes. So he had things not go well? Yes. Do you not know that Jesus, uh, with all his heart, actually desired Israel to accept him as the Messiah because that was the right thing for them to do? And oh, the blessings he wanted to pour on them but didn't because they crucified him. Now they have to wait until the millennial kingdom one day. Secondly, Jesus does know all about it. I want you to know, my friend, Jesus not only knows all the things from your past, he knows uh, explicitly all the things about your present better than you do. I mean, Jesus is the real great counselor. He's the perfect confidant he truly is your best friend and I want you to hear me on this now regardless of whether you're a good Christian or not Jesus still loves and cares about you he does third and last Jesus knows how we'll get through it all and I think this is probably what sets him apart more than anything I mean my best friend my dear wife, my actual blood relative, it wouldn't matter. They could all talk to me and say, it'll, it'll be okay. And, and yet with some, 
some real and I think valid skepticism, we could say, well, how do you know that? Well, in the case of Jesus, he does know that. He knows how we're going to get through it. How is that? Well, the verse tells us at the end of verse 33, he has overcome the world. You see, when Franklin Graham and his volunteers left New York City, the mayor thanked them. Not everybody, but the mayor did. When, the, uh, when uh, North Valley Baptist was fined, thousands wrote the city on their behalf. Uh, when the professor at Iowa State made uh, that silly threat, uh, some groups at the university said, no, you can't do that, and, and she had to change, uh, change that rule. I, I want you to know, sometimes, sometimes God allows us to see the actual things work out. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes we don't, this side of heaven. But I want you to know, we need to do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. And I want you to know this, in heaven, everybody is going to know whether we did the right thing or not. We can be of good cheer. Now, how is that possible? Because when we really digest and grab a hold of what Jesus said, he says, you may have peace, you may cheer up, be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. He's overcome it. Now, right now, boy, we're still living in a, a world full of messes, full of problems, full of all sorts of stuff. Uh, I was watching, I, I watch the news every day or almost every day, and goodness sakes, stuff going on in our country and around the world. Oh, good night, you know. Huh. I, I think it's going to get better next year. I really do. We'll see. But regardless, we're going to do the right thing because Jesus said, Cheer up, I've overcome the world. The future is actually already set, isn't it? Jesus knows what's going to happen. The outcome is actually already decided. Jesus knows what's going to happen. And in that, so Jesus tells us, be of good cheer, we can be. Oh, now, th does your cage get rattled sometime? Yes, mine does too. But Jesus says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Let's stand for a time of invitation. And I've got, I've got just a few things you might consider praying about this morning, talking to the Lord about. First of all, maybe you might be like old Nehemiah and say, Lord, I, I look around. Lord, please forgive the sins of my people. Forgive the sins of my nation. And, and, and I want you to stop now, because if you're going to say, well, I'm not causing any problem, that's what the Pharisees said. Uh, Nehemiah had such a heart, he realized he needed to ask God to forgive for the sins of everybody connected to his nation, his people. Secondly, maybe we need to say, Lord, I've, man, I, I've been anxious, I've been stressed, I've been depressed. And if you say that, hey, I, I connect with you because I get it. I've been there. I, maybe I am there some days. I don't know. But we're like, Lord, we just need to say, Lord God, help me. And then why not finish whatever prayer we start with the Lord and say, Lord, help me be of good cheer. Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, we come before you with humble hearts, Lord. And Lord, uh, I just want to confess to you right now, uh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm not handling everything well. The, Lord, the tugs of this and being pulled by that and, uh, Lord, uh, threats and attitudes and, uh, Lord, forgive me, Lord. And Lord, I, I want you to know I want to be of good cheer. And Lord, I realize that there are days that uh, the concerns of the day are heavy. But Lord, help in every believer that hears this message today, 
help everyone to know we need to be of good cheer because Lord you have overcome the world now Lord we have so much to look forward to Lord if we can just take our eyes off of all the problems of our day and look to the day that one day we're in glory with you Lord oh how grand that'll be and so Lord we open our altar today for whatever people want to pray about Lord I pray there's some folks that'll come and say oh Lord God praying for my people my country Lord maybe Lord there's some that come and say Lord help me with some stress some tension some anxiousness Lord I'm I'm with them on that one Lord and and Lord maybe there's somebody that comes and said Lord give me some good cheer and these things Lord we pray in your son's name amen with heads bowed if you'd like to slip out for a time of prayer now's an appropriate time Savior divine. Thank you. You may be seated and coming to pray for offering the day. Jim Stoker, appreciate him and his family. And again, uh, whether you're giving here or online or mailing it in, dropping it off, we want you to know we appreciate uh, your faithful support. God bless. Let's pray. Our great God in heaven who created the universe, who loves each and every one of us, Lord, who has a plan for us, we do thank you, Lord Jesus, for your words of wisdom in this passage, this hard but wonderful passage, Lord, hard because it does say that we will go through trials and that we will go through hard times, Lord, uh, wonderful because we know that, first of all, you will be with us through these times, and we can feel your presence, Lord, and we thank you for that. Secondly, Lord, because of the wonderful fact that you will overcome and our sorrow will be turned to joy. What a wonderful, wonderful fact this is, Lord. Thank you for this passage. Lord, we pray now for these tithes and these offerings. Lord, for those that are giving here, we thank you for each of them. We thank you for all of those online. Uh, pray that you would bless all the giving, whether it be from here or from online, that it may go forth, Lord, to, to bless others, to honor and glorify your name, Lord, also to reach the, uh, the lost with the gospel. Lord, we do thank you again and praise you for all these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. One night, I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. 
After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, My precious child, I love you and I will never leave you. Never, ever during the trials and testings. When you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you.